only mode. Hello everybody and welcome to our first Apprentice Make UK webinar. So in these strange times uh, we would have normally um, have done an open day for you guys to come and have a look around um, but because of the situation we're in we're going to do this as a webinar to give you all the information you need about what it's like to become a Make UK Apprentice, to be an apprentice in the manufacturing and engineering sector and also give you the opportunity to ask any questions. So today on the panel you'll be able to hear from myself Andrea Ball uh, who head of next generation marketing Mark Fallant our commercial manager will be giving you a presentation on what it's like at Make UK and what apprenticeship programs we have on offer Venetia will be able to uh, answer any of your questions about recruitment we'll also have a presentation from James who's one of our Ibstock apprentices giving you a view of what it's like to be an apprentice and Lily as well who's one of our apprentices so now I'd like to hand over to Mark Farrant, who will take you through the presentation. Thanks, Andrea. Welcome to everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, as Andrea said, my name's Mark Farrant. Uh, I'm normally based at our amazing state-of-the-art technology training centre, um, which I'm going to quickly show you a video of to hopefully uh, give you a bit of a flavour as to what it looks like and some inspiration. paid to learn and then you further training such as a degree. I chose an apprenticeship because I knew the A-levels wasn't for me. I can't, it was not for me. The gov. You know, not just waiting for and want to go to uni. I didn't want that classroom based learning. I wanted to get hands on learning. And I just secondary school with your maths. Being an apprentice has very many skills on the technical side of things and also on a personal level. confidence has, has brought It will do a really big impact in my future career. What? Yeah. Uh, is that I get you know, as a mix of uh, constantly adapt to situations and it allows well, that to more students yes. and I'd like to inspire I think my colleague Andrew will probably send that video out at the end of the uh, presentation so you guys can have a, a rewatch of that uh, so who are make UK um, make UK rebranded in February 2019 so Hopefully the advertising, the publicity, the media uh, have, have sent this message to you guys. But we used to be called the EEF uh, and have been around for over 120 years, supporting engineering, manufacturing, uh, but not just with apprentice and skills. We tend to support with health and safety issues, guidance and support for the business, legal. Uh, and we've got lots of different offices all around the country and uh, issues like COVID-19. But um, uh, we, we, we certainly survey all of our all of our engineering manufacturing members to to feedback to to government uh, and let them know sort of what we need for the sector. But more importantly, we also get some information from the sector in terms of skills and what they what, what they expect from a, a young person coming on to an apprenticeship. And that gives us a bit of an edge in terms of our delivery and setting apprentices up for skills for the future. So moving on. Hopefully by now, everyone should know what an apprenticeship is. Uh, I'm, I'd like to think that everyone has seen all of the uh, media news, the government promotions and had advice and guidance within schools. But just to confirm, an apprenticeship is absolutely a mix of on the job training. So you will be coming to our training centre to uh, learn new skills. You will also be given a contract of employment at the, uh, at the company that you've managed to get your apprenticeship with. That will involve a wage, uh, which I'll come on to a little bit later, and a minimum of 30 hours a week. Um, so you will absolutely be earning and, uh, and learning while you're on an apprenticeship. A couple of, um, a couple of myths, really. Um, so I'll, I'll let everyone sort of read through the, uh, the uh, myth bustings, um, but an apprentice doesn't earn very much. Um, so our, the average wage in, of a first year apprentice in our training centre was about £220 a week. I think that's pretty good for, um, uh, for a training wage. Um, if I tell a quick story about all of the donkey work is given to an apprentice, so I, I visit a lot of our customers, a lot of uh, the engineering manufacturing companies around the West Midlands and around the UK. 
uh, I sit with managing directors and uh, and owners of businesses, and they are very uh, very adamant that um, that their apprentices do not do any donkey work. They see them as investments, so they want to invest in an apprentice, uh, spend time and money to make sure they've got the skills and the knowledge they need to do the job roles that they'll need them in the future. So they certainly don't class them as um, uh, as as apprentices doing any any donkey work. Uh, and 83% of manufacturers offer apprentices make sure that they have the skills and they value the apprentices that they uh, that they want to take on. So moving on to the next slide. There's lots of job roles within engineering manufacturing, and on this particular slide is we're just listing a few. Uh, so a machinist, a tool maker, uh, a maintenance engineer. Lots of companies will have lots of different job roles, and they'll use different terminologies as well. Uh, I think when you come to interview stage or speaking to an employer, I, I, I wouldn't be afraid of, of asking what that particular job role means because they all have different terminologies and, and some companies will use the same term but mean slightly different things. Uh, and believe it or not, uh, engineering and manufacturing job roles are in lots of different sectors. Uh, so aerospace, automotive, healthcare are, are listed on the, on the right-hand side. Uh, if I mentioned to you uh, retail, and a well-known brand by the name of Marks and Spencers. Uh, they take on a load of maintenance engineers and we work with uh, their engineering uh, site in Castle, Castle Donington. So a little bit of, uh, little bit of facts. Um, when you order a item of clothing online, the computer tells the computer in the warehouse to go and pick the item of clothing. It gets put onto a, an automated rail, which is sent round the factory and, and around the site and dropped into a box and then into a uh, back of a lorry. So no one actually touches that item of clothing uh, before it gets into the lorry. But obviously all of that kit needs maintaining by highly skilled engineers uh, in uh, with a, a multi-skilled discipline. So if I give you a typical rundown by looking at the next slide on what you might expect when you come to Make UK. So once you've got your apprenticeship confirmed with the uh, with the employer most of our apprenticeships are four years so the first year on average is about 36 40 weeks of engineering training in our technical training center that would include uh, a BTEC more than likely or a HNC depending on uh, on what sort of pathway you come in on and what the employer wants you to do but ultimately you'll spend Monday to Friday in the technical training center Typical day starts at eight o'clock and finishes at half four. Uh, but don't worry, we do allow uh, uh, breaks for lunch and, uh, and, and rest breaks. Uh, but you, you clock in and clock out like you would at work. So we're sort of preparing you for the working world. Uh, and we've got to get you through a number of different disciplines. And it could be in our electrical bays, it could be in our welding. Uh, you could be doing robotics. You might be doing machining. Um, but you'll be guided by some of our uh, qualified workshop staff. Uh, and you'll also have a friendly student liaison office uh, to support you. Uh, so they'll keep you on track. They'll be reporting back to the, the company to let them know how well you're doing uh, and what subjects that you're doing at the time. Once you've finished your first year, um, you're on to your second year. So that'll probably be around the June, July time that you'll go back to company uh, for four days a week. Uh, and then you'll start your second year of your BTEC or HNC. Uh, so that will be on a one day uh, week, uh, one day release basis. So first year full time in our training center, second year four days at company, one day at the training center. And again, you'll get the same support from our Make UK staff. Um, in the second year, you will start what we call the development competency phase. So this is all about becoming competent at the job role within your um, within your workplace. So the idea is that you've taken your basic training, you've taken your knowledge, and you're now going to apply it in the workplace. But don't worry, you'll be supported by, first and foremost by a member of staff at that company. So you'll be taken under their wing, and then our skilled training development advisors will look after you and mentor you through the program into years two, three, and four. Uh, so they'll be making sure that the evidence you gain can be mapped against industry standards, um, because at the end of the, the four years, uh, you'll have to do an endpoint assessment. So I don't know how many of mums and dads and 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 uh, 
and apprentices uh, or, or potential apprentices have looked into these new standards, new qualifications, but there will be an endpoint assessment at the end, uh, which is a little bit like a driving test. So the company and the Make UK staff will take you through driving lessons, so to speak, and then at the end you'll have an independent uh, company, maybe IMECE or IET, uh, who will take you through an endpoint assessment uh, or a driving test and then sign you off as competent and then that's your apprenticeship completed. So just as a uh, as, as, as a rough guidance, it's a, it's a four-year program, but every company is different. Uh, everyone is different as well. So it could be three and a half, it could be slightly longer. Uh, and what we would do is when someone joins our program, we would always look at their prior learning. So do they have uh, a BTEC already? So maybe they've already got a level three BTEC studied at a college or a school. Maybe they've already done some workshop qualifications so they might have done electrical installation we will look at your prior learning and adjust your your timetable accordingly so we, we wouldn't make you redo anything and we'd certainly be looking to progress you at every time so moving on to the next slide this little infograph just shows a bit of a comparison between doing an apprenticeship in a university uh, on the left uh, nine out of ten apprentices are, are employed once they finish their apprenticeship that is absolutely true uh, when you come to the Make UK cohorts. If you think about it, a company is going to invest in you for four years, they're going to spend lots of money, they're going to train you up to be the best apprentice that you can ever be. Uh, why would they not want to take you on after, after a four-year commitment? I think they'd be mad not to. Uh, over on the right-hand side, potentially you may, you may draw up uh, £50,000 of debt. Uh, I don't mind telling you that I've got three kids, so the chances of all them going to university and me spending three times that amount is unlikely, so I might be pushing them down towards uh, an apprenticeship. Uh, and as I said earlier, earn while you learn. Our average uh, weekly wage was about £210, and I'll come on to a, a, that a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Um, but you will be getting paid on a weekly basis or monthly basis, depend on, on the company. Uh, and um, if you've got some some kind mums and dads, then hopefully they won't make you pay for their mortgage and their utility bills. So that'll be money in your pocket to spend on whatever you want at the end of the week. Interestingly, on the next slide, we've got all of the companies that we work with for maybe two years, three years, four years. Some we've worked with for 15, 20 years, um, all very uh, good brands around the West Midlands and around the country. Some you'll recognize, some you won't. I'd like to think that Make UK would only work with companies that are reputable and have the best interests of the apprentice apprenticeships that they take on. Uh, because we want it to be successful and I'm sure lots of mums and dads want their sons and daughters to be successful and have, have uh, prosperous careers. Um, some of these companies have got current vacancies on board at the minute. So when you do have a chance to pop onto the Make UK website to look at live vacancies, you will see a variety of uh, vacancies on there um, from Ishida, Ibstock, Epwin, Epson. Uh, on there will be the salaries. And I, I mentioned a, a average of a first year salary, 220. So when you go on there, you will see that. Due to the uh, current climate, um, a lot of the companies are just waiting for, uh, I guess they're waiting for Boris Johnson to let us know about the lockdown restrictions. So they are in the middle of just confirming what their job vacancies look like and getting ready to push the button to advertise. So we've set up a engineering manufacturing apprenticeship on our vacancies page. And it does say due to the impact of, of the, the, the virus, um, if you can't find a current vacancy, then please register your interest anyway. And we can then let you know as soon as possible when new vacancies come on board. And that perhaps will give you a little bit of a, a competitive edge when uh, when applying because you'll get in there first. So just to confirm, what can you expect from Make UK? Uh, as I said, four years of, of support from uh, one of the best engineering and manufacturing training providers in the country. Um, developing your skills and possibly entering world skills. So I don't know if any one of you have been to the NEC in uh, November time to see the world skills. Uh, very, very tough competition, but we, we, we like to enter teams in multiple disciplines every year and provide coaching and mentoring uh, after hours for, uh, for anyone who wants to uh, attend. We, we'd very much like you to be STEM ambassadors to pass on the good word as to why you're being an apprentice. 
and obviously you're going to be training in um, top of the range facilities uh, but don't worry there are well-being safeguarding measures in place so uh, we will certainly look after you uh, over the um, over the course of the uh, apprenticeship and then on the next slide our marketing team have uh, have come up with a nice little infograph uh, so Nick Colissimo uh, is is looking at ways of, of how he he thinks technology is going to take off in the next uh, 20 years uh, and there's going to be a wide ranging of, of, of new and exciting uh, apprenticeship and job roles out there and on the next slide it gives a bit of a flavor of some of these job roles that will be around um, I won't read them all out to you you guys can have a look through and and, uh, and the presentation will be sent around later uh, I would argue that auto advisors probably already exist. So experts who provide advice to companies on where robotic automation can be applied and identify opportunities for upgrades. Uh, so we already have a, a fantastic uh, automation and robotic cell, uh, which uh, which everyone gets to learn on. Uh, and, and those job roles certainly do uh, to apply. I would even try to pronounce the, I, I, the AI ethicist. Uh, a technician will ensure that AI is programmed. Uh, so if we click on to the next panel, uh, so this is how we're going to apply. So if, if after you've um, uh, sort of had your, your questions and answered, uh, hopefully all answered, um, please pop on to makeuk.org uh, slash future makers, check out all of the current vacancies. And as I say, there is a vacancy on there where you can apply and register your interest for uh, other vacancies that, that um, uh, that are going to be coming online in the next uh, couple of weeks and next month uh, and, I'd, and I'd like to think that um, there'll be opportunities for everyone really to uh, um, to find no, no matter what discipline that they're, they're interested in and if I leave you with a couple of couple of inspirational photos so you have uh, some of the um, uh, some of the, the world skills winners. So there's two young men from Amazon with uh, uh, golds. They were gold winners at the world skills. Our beautiful robotic center, uh, robotic cell, uh, fully automated, uh, moving things into the future. And then we've got some STEM activity and some uh, initial assessment activity going on. So I'll hand you back over to to Andrea. Great, thank you, Mark. Um, I hope everyone found that really useful. Um, as we go through the next uh, piece when we hear from our apprentices, if you do have any questions, uh, then type those into the question box and we'll get round to answering those at the end um, once we've heard from the apprentices. So, uh, um, James, um, over to you really to explain what it's like to be an apprentice at Make UK and um, some of your advice and top tips on how to apply. Hi, so I'm James Walton, I'm 19 and I'm an apprentice for Ribstock Bricks. So I'm doing an apprenticeship in advanced manufacturing and engineering at level three. And I decided to do an apprenticeship because when I was going through school, I enjoyed, found myself engaging more in kind of practical and science subjects. And it led me to kind of want to think about a career in that with aspects of it but I didn't enjoy the studying as much I didn't enjoy going into school sixth form every day doing the four day studying Saturday desk I wanted to do something different so an apprenticeship suited well because it's learning on the job but it's also supported by the theory so you get a very kind of thorough understanding of it and so far so I'm I'm based in Nottingham, but uh, I'm a residential apprentice, so we stay at a hotel near the college. So, so far, one of the highlights I've found, which isn't just because I'm residential, but I've bonded quite well with the other apprentices at the uh, college. So you end up creating very good friends who you can support, they can support you, and it has a nice feel about it. And I've had no kind of experience as such in engineering so far before I took this job. So I've done school. I then went into another apprenticeship, which was in a completely different sector because I rushed into it. I rushed into it, found I wasn't enjoying it that 
much and then looked I uh, the Mate UK website and the Ivstock job I found on gov.uk and I took a bit of a look into it I saw the facilities I read a bit about the apprenticeships that have already gone through and how they've kind of furthered their career so I thought this is something for me so it took a bit of debating to decide whether to go for it but looking back I'd probably say to my self you're not going to lose anything by going for it it's something that it's a great opportunity and the other thing that i've really enjoyed as i had no experience is the practical side of it so kind of you learn it the tutors are all supportive and you do exercises to test your knowledge and that and then you come to the assignments on each topic and that's just kind of a showcase for you to get your head down and show off what you can do get it done get it signed off and then once you've done that you get a very kind of good sense of satisfaction that yes i've learned it i'm improving myself not just the skills but general day-to-day -day life communication skills and after the friendship which is a four year one i plan to kind of stay with the company and further myself i know their options to carry on training which can't help which can't hinder you so that's my plan and just say go for it the facility is i haven't seen anything like it anywhere else. and that's me great perfect thank you james and uh, lily i don't know if you're there and you can hear us uh, but if you can do you want to give um, an overview of your experience um can you hear me sally yep perfect you're good to go perfect um thank you james um we're very good friends at college and we're very lucky to like study together because we're on the same vocational course um yeah i am lily race and i work with mondelein international and i'm trained to be um an technical operator and engineer um and i used to be a teacher i'm 24 years of age about to turn 25 this year in september and i used to teach english for a school in birmingham and then one day i just woke up and i thought to myself i want to do things with my hands i want to learn a skill so I quit being a teacher and then um, signed up for Make UK to the wonderful um, Venetia Hardiman and then Jenny Stevenson and they've helped me along the way ever since and I've thoroughly enjoyed it and I've never looked back um, made amazing friends my tutors have been so supportive um, I've been offered so many wonderful opportunities I've learned bench fitting maintenance electrics mm. I it's just like a um, quite a that there's a, such a plethora of studies that you can go through as james has just been saying yes you go through your um on section uh practical work and then you get signed off with your written work and it's just so satisfying just to like go around all these sections and learn all these skills to be able to be able to apply to your company but also for yourself like um i i've never learned the art of bench fitting before but now i know how to file for eight hours a day and how to make a, a um a center point gauge which has been very satisfying to see and and you get to keep all these pieces um i would 100 percent recommend an apprenticeship to anyone going through this because i've also been to university got my two one but obviously i've done it the other way around as some of the people at um college would have done it um i've done university first Career and then now I'm doing an apprenticeship. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry about that, everyone. Lily, um, you're dropping in and out, so I think um, we'll we'll move on to some questions, and hopefully you'll be able to answer some of the questions from that are coming through from some of the um, attendees. Um, so I think maybe um, this first question, uh, Mark, of situations in your company. Say again, sorry. 
Uh, Lily, you're, you're kind of you're dropping out, so I think we'll just move on to the questions now. And if you can help us answer some of the questions, that would be perfect. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Sally. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, so yeah, so we've got a few questions that have come through. So uh, Mark, if I can get you to answer this first question, um, does Make UK or anyone they work with train civil engineers, and could you give any advice on where to find a civil engineering um, apprenticeship? Uh, most of what we do, uh, Andrea, is um, engineering manufacturing. So I, I, I sort of the sectors we mentioned were more uh, automotive, aerospace. Um, civil engineering is, is probably a slightly different qualification to the one that we we would uh, normally teach. Uh, but I, I, I'd recommend going onto the the government website where you can search all apprenticeship vacancies uh, and qualifications and find uh, vacancies that way. Or if you went on to the Institute for Apprenticeships, uh, the new standards website, typed in the standard or the, uh, the qualification that you're looking for, and that will that will enable you to put your postcode in to find the nearest provider of a, of a civil engineering apprenticeship. Great, thank you, Mark. Um, and then another question. Um, so I guess um, Lily or James, if you want to take this one. Um, so at, when you become um, an apprentice, do you feel like you're part of the company you work for um, at Make UK at, in your first year? So how kind of included do you feel in um, in the company that you work you're working for? Yeah. You go first, James. <laughs> yeah. So on with the start. You feel extremely included. So I applied through the Evstock company. So they were the first people I kind of had any contact with before going to make. And since then you meet all your fact all the people who work in your factory as in the half terms and college shutdown, you then go back to factory normally. So you get involved there, you get to kind of learn the feel about how the company works, how the factory or whatever site works. And then you get allocated obviously your line manager who will check up with you and I think it's every 12 weeks you have a review with your student liaison and your line manager so it's a bit of a update on kind of what everything well what you're doing how everything's going what you'd like to do a bit more of in factory so it's all very inclusive um same for Mondelez, they're very um, involved with us. Um, I mean, I've recently broken my collarbone and they've been very supportive in terms of that, getting me back on my feet and like um, supportive in terms of like my career goals as I want to be a line lead eventually. Um, so they've also they've always been very supportive. I've got two amazing, ama amazing managers that have looked after me thoroughly through the past like six months since I've joined the company. So it's been very satisfying and Make It Care have obviously been amazing with me as well. So. I'm very proud and very um, committed to my work. Great, thank you. Um, so moving on to the next question, Venetia, if you can answer this one for me. Um, if I wanted to look for a place that started in September, um, could I start looking now? Or would I have to um, look at maybe something more in 2021? No, I'd suggest you start looking now, uh, purely to get a feel for the kind of roles that are coming through. Um, because as a business, we do have employers that come through to us every 12 months with their new roles. So definitely start looking now. Keep your eye on our website. Um, every new vacancy will go on there. We've had some more go on this morning. And just keep looking now. And as we said earlier, Mark, in his discussion, we've set up um, like a generic uh, vacancy that you can actually register against. And then what we'll do is send you updates of any new vacancies that come through. So it's never too early to start looking. Great, thank you, uh, Venetia. Uh, Lily, if you don't mind answering this question. Um, so is it hard being a female engineer? Have you had to overcome any barriers? Um, and what advice would you give to somebody who wants to become um, an engineer and they're female? Um, well, uh, that's, well, I've joined um, Females in Engineering um, and it's been a very supportive community. So I have never been feeling that I've been left out in the situation because obviously we all have the stigma against uh, the industry in terms of we think it's like a male dominated world. I've thrown myself into it. Um, I've actually been quite proud that I've been promoted 
before some of the male um, colleagues I've been working alongside. So I've been um, quite proud of myself, my abilities. I don't doubt for a second that any girl should not apply for something like this. Um, and my advice is just go for it because like, it's ridiculous. We need to, we need to flip the script and understand that like, people need um, a plethora of ideas and opinions and females are offering a new lease of life and there's, there's all these communities that are supporting the situation and I'm definitely an advocate for it and I'm definitely a member of it so um, my advice fundamentally would just be have confidence and go for it and I will, I, I've, I've been mentoring um, a young girl in my group at the moment about this situation so yeah I think we need to just try and promote girls in engineering more because there's a lot lot of stigma and we need to try and fight that but I'm very proud to be a female engineer thank you for asking that question oh great thank you Lily that's a really great answer and hopefully that'll inspire lots of people to uh, become an, a female apprent an apprentice um so James I don't know if you wouldn't mind answering this next question um so what's the best part of being an apprentice instead of just staying on in education so I'd probably say the best part that I've had with this apprenticeship is the it's kind of the belonging to something. So you see a pathway to where you're going. You start off as an apprenticeship, and you learn, you work your way through the factory. So you learn, you pick up new skills, and you'll be able to see yourself every time you go back into factory. You'll be able to do more and more. As well as that, you get to meet people who you never would have met before. The people who I stay with in the hotel, you've got some from Newcastle, some from London, everywhere. And we all get on and create friendships. So it's beneficial in that sense. Perfect. Thank you, James. Um, so I guess next one. Um question about recruitment so Venetia if you don't mind answering this one um, I get times um, are slightly different um, now than they would be in a normal recruitment process um, could you just explain it, what the assessment centres and the recruitment structure is like for somebody wanting to become an apprentice um, this academic year yeah so obviously um, we've had to reshuffle and rejig some of the ways that we conduct stuff like um, assessment days so a lot of our companies are moving to um, Skype calls, so Skype assessments, uh, you know, doing telephone interviews. We've had offers of employment during, obviously, our shutdown. So companies are still actively recruiting, even though they're not necessarily in their place of work. So it's definitely still go onto our vacancies, apply for the vacancy. You'll be shortlisted. You'll be offered either a telephone interview or maybe a Skype interview. Uh, depending on the company, how they look at assessments, it may be that they set you a task that then you'll have to go on and present uh, by, via Skype or Zoom or whichever way you're using. But no, definitely uh, still happening. We're still getting offers. Companies have adjusted. Like we've had to adjust. Great. Thank you, Venetia. Um, Mark, uh, I wonder whether you can answer this question. Um, so do we have big class sizes at Make UK? Um, what kind of is the average uh, size of a, of, a, of a class for an apprentice? Uh, I can't answer that question, Andrew. Yeah, so in the workshop, we work off a 1 to 12 ratio. So that's one expert tutor to 12 apprentices. And in the classroom for BTEC, HNC or foundation degree, we have a 1 to 18 ratio where the uh, uh, tutor works with the 18 princes. Uh, obviously, moving forward with um, restrictions and things like that, then that might change. And um, what impact has the current situation had, Mark, on our, the apprentices that are in the centre at the moment? Uh, so with, um, with, with lockdown restrictions in place, the training centre is closed, like many other uh, places around the country. Um, but we, we've we've moved to a lot of virtual classes. So we're teaching BTEC HNC Foundation degree uh, all through the week to over 500 apprentice uh, learners. That's year ones, year twos, some year threes, and some year fours. Um, so they're all they're all still being taught, which is brilliant. And some of the theory stuff that we're doing online and video content. Uh, to, to ensure that they're all um, all still in learning. Um, so I'd like to think that our princes are 
are grateful for the for the for the for the um the release from um uh, from lockdown on on a day really a day basis or two days a week um you know to have that focus perfect thank you mark um Benicia, one for you uh what age do i have to be to get to become an apprentice so okay so you have to obviously have left school so um we have people from 16 right the way through there is no limit no upper upper limit um so as long as you've officially left school and are able to take on an apprenticeship then that's the age that we can take people from okay great thank you and then um james if you wouldn't mind answering this one's so, um, specific to ibstock what are your typical job roles that you get assigned to do um, at ibstock so at Ibstock, most of us there at Make are maintenance engineers. So it's between mechanical maintenance and electrical maintenance. So I'm an electrical, I'm more electrical based. So any breakdowns and the maintenance of the site on shutdown, we'd get called over, investigate, and then it'd be on us to either fix it ourselves or go up to the fitters and do that but I'm sure they have had apprentices previously who do more of the fitting side so more of the mechanical just we've got a problem and then they go and sort it out as opposed to maintenance. Great, thanks, James. And uh, Lily, the same question for you. Um, what is it the the job you're involved with it in Mondelez as part of your apprenticeship program that you're on? So whenever we go back, uh, thanks, Sally. Whenever we go back, go back to site, um, my main job roles will be centre lining, um, working to fix motors, um, just general maintenance on like uh, the Bosch machinery that we used to uh, make the chocolate, and also um, just general. Um, maintenance duties just like if there's been like a belt uh, been breaking or been wearing out we need to obviously order that from the stocks and then um, refit that um, etc so that's our general duties uh, from day to day great thank you um mark one a uh, couple for you um what um hours do you do when you're in the center do you have to be there um every day of the week and actually where is the center and how do you how do you how do you get there uh, so, in first question on the hours, um, we expect the apprentices to arrive uh, before eight o'clock to start work at eight uh, and then finish at 4.30. So that's eight till 4.30 Monday to Thursday and then eight till 12.30 on a Friday. Uh, obviously, there are what we call shutdown weeks, pred predominantly around Easter, Christmas and half term. So there are opportunities to take uh, annual leave. And a typical a typical duration would be September to about end of June time for your first year off the job. Uh, but ultimately, you need to remember that you are an apprentice, you are being paid, you do have a contract of employment, um, so you are the um, the employee of a company. So you'll be down you'll 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 be working under their terms and conditions and their annual leave uh, uh, entitlement. Uh, both of our training centres are in Aston. So to give a bit of a, a flavour, uh, we can see the Aston Villa football ground out of the window. So you have Witten train station, uh, about five minutes stroll uh, from the training centre. And you have the A34 that runs past the, um, the uh, Greyhound racing track. Uh, and that is probably a 10 minute stroll down to the uh, apprentice um, train centre. We also provide bus, a bus service from Birmingham City Centre. So if you are coming from slightly further afield, you can always get the train into Birmingham City Centre and we will bus you back and forth uh, to the training to our training centre. Perfect, thank you. Um, I guess, and Mark as well, if you don't mind answering this question. Um, so if um, somebody who's finished a university degree, could they still apply to be an apprentice? They, they they could Andrea. I, I I would take it on a case by case basis because it does depend on the type of uh, degree that they've done. So the rules are clear that the, if it's materially different, then the company can access funding to fund them onto training. Uh, I think if 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 a 
if a young person with a university degree wanted to do an engineering um, uh, apprenticeship and couldn't and the company couldn't fund them then the company can still fund uh, self-fund so we have had people come on with degrees and the company of self-fund for the right person perfect thank you um and the next question please mark uh do the companies that we work with um allow progression on to a degree apprenticeship or just an ordinary university degree program uh every company is different every learner is different uh but I, what i would say is most of the companies that we work for are happy to sponsor an apprentice to a H and C level. So most of the companies work for uh, are happy to sponsor uh, to pay for a H and C for their apprentice, and some of the companies that we work for are happy to pay for a degree program for their apprentice. Uh, it's never never a given. You've got to work hard for it. You've got to be. You've got to earn it. Um, but a lot of the companies that we work with are happy to to progress apprentice. End um, of the webinar. Have come through. We have afterwards, at the end of this webinar, how to contact us um, and also again. Um, so thank you very much for attending the webinar. Thanks, guys, for being on the panel and presenting and answering all, all the questions. And again, if you do want to get in touch with